So now let's uh, think about uh, what happens if we have a circular region. Okay, not a, a region defined by two vectors, but let's say we have a circular region. Okay, like a disk. How do we sample uniformly uh, using a disk on a disk? Okay. Now. Uh, the disk can be defined, like any point on the disk can be defined two parameters. Right? One is uh, the, let's say, uh, this is our zero angle, and one uh, axis uh, we can call is phi. Okay? Phi, as I go along the phi, I'll be rotating like this. Okay? So, uh, but uh, this will rotate me along the, uh, around the disk. Another uh, variable is r, the radius. Okay, so the radius controls basically how far away I am from the center. Okay, so for example, I can be along here. Okay, so this is r1. Um, this can be, for example, uh, r2. Okay, so every point basically on the disk can be. Um, can be identified by using these two parameters, right? So this point here, here, let's call this point, let's call P, and let's call this point Q, okay? So here, uh, I know that P is equal, so let's call this angle phi, okay? Uh, P is equal to, um, P is equal to uh, the, basically the parameters for the P uh, are, phi and r1 r1 okay uh, and the q uh, the parameters for that are phi uh, and um, actually the polar coordinates i think is better to call r1 and r2 okay so every point can be uh, distinguished by its coordinates uh, the polar coordinates in this case uh, like that now, uh, imagine that you want to sample uniformly on this disk, okay? So one approach could be, again, let's say, generate two random numbers, Psi1 and Psi2. And uh, let's say uh, I will choose uh, my phi uh, using phi i is equal to, okay, so the total uh, domain, the domain of the phi uh, is 2 pi, right? So phi i is 2 pi chi 1 i and uh, the uh, r i is equal to let's say r times chi 2 i okay? Now here what we are doing is we are actually uh, covering all possibilities, right? Because chi is between 0 and 1. Uh, chi is between 0 and 1. 2 pi chi is going to be somewhere between 0 and 2 pi. And because, uh, again, uh, chi 2 is also between 0 and 1, r times chi 2, uh, this r is the radius, right? This r is the radius, is going to be like that. Now, this is an easy way of generating these polar coordinates, but actually it turns out that this approach does not work for uniform sampling. Why doesn't it work? Because imagine that here you generate four samples. Okay, let's say one, two, three, four. Okay, and also think about a larger area here, larger uh, okay, uh, a ring, okay, a larger ring. Again, you have four samples. Okay, so you can see that as we move away from the center of the disk, the samples start to spread out from each other if we use this approach. Okay, if every, uh, if in this direction, uh, if along the radius, you give equal probability for the samples, and if you give equal probability along the uh, the circular uh, angle here, uh, you are going to give more probability to the center region. So if you sample like that, 
uh, you will end up with more samples co uh, concentrated towards the center. Okay? So this approach actually does not work uh, for uniform sampling a, a disk. Okay? So how do we do that? We will learn about this. Okay? We will learn a couple of methods. But just uh, to um, give you the answer uh, before we continue, the true way, the true method is going to be, instead of R uh, chi i, we want to give more samples away from the uh, center. And actually, it's going to be, we must put a square root here. Okay? If you put a square root here, note that because chi is between 0 and 1, uh, the values, uh, when you uh, take, a, take the square root, is going to get larger, okay? So, uh, it's going to push samples more towards the outer regions, and also the, uh, the disk area is also grows uh, with respect to the, uh, the square of the radius. This balances out, but we will officially drive how to, where the square root comes from. Okay? But if you want to uniformly sample a disk, this should be the method for selecting the polar coordinates. Okay? After you compute the polar coordinates, you can convert them to Cartesian coordinates uh, to find the x-y values of your points.